Hello everyone, I'm DMI, the mind of one and all, and welcome back to another episode of No One But You. So, in the last episode, we found out Shinachi's dead, as I called it, I knew it, I called it from like, what, part 5? Like, yeah, like, just the first hint that she might be dead, like, I think believe Megumi was like, Shinachi, isn't she? And then I'm like, what happened? But she got cut off. Then I'm like, maybe she's dead. Then I'm like, I've shrugged it off. Like, nah. Then as time went on, I'm more convinced that she was dead. And now I'm calling it. I'm not even gonna act smug anymore. I'm. I'm. It's just like, you know, it's just there. It's not. It's so obvious. It's not. It's nothing to be proud of. But yeah. So now we, I get think that we're in the flashback. And we're learning what, I think we're also learning what happened to Hideaki's father. Yeah, I think he got turned into an accident. And we're gonna learn how exactly Chinatsu died in the river. Although she tried to act natural as she approached the door, Mom's voice told me that she was... Wait, Mom's voice told me that she was every bit as scared as I was. Yep, because your father didn't return home until this late at night, and even then, he wouldn't knock. We both instinctively knew that something horrible was about to happen, and when my mother opened the door, our fears were confirmed. Excuse me, are you Mrs. Naito? Standing in our doorway was a solitary police officer. He wore a neutral expression on his face as though he didn't want to either relieve or worry us. And he fails miserably. My mother stands before him nervously rubbing her arm, while my heart pounds so hard that I think I'm going to vomit. Yes, that's right, I'm Mrs. Naito. I'm afraid I have some bad news, ma'am. Is it about my husband? That's right. Your husband, he, um... Although he maintained a stern expression until this point, the police officer now looked incredibly anxious. His eyes darted here and there, resting everywhere but on my mother's face. I'm sorry, Mr. Naito, Mrs. Naito, but that was an accident. Your husband's car was tail ended by was tail ended by a speeding truck. It was pronounced dead on the scene. D dead? My husband? Is dead? The officer continued talking, spluttering as he spoke. He spoke many platitudes telling us how quick my father's death must have been and how he didn't suffer, but once again his goodwill had the opposite effect. How could the officer know that it didn't hurt? He was the one who was hit with Yeah, he wasn't the one who was hit by the truck. My dad was. My dad was the man who helped me learn how to ride a bike and cheered for me at athletic events and went hunting for cicadas with me in the forest on weekends. He can't be. He couldn't be. I saw him on only this morning. He said happy birthday, he did, and kissed the top of my forehead. Then promised he'd be back from working time for dinner. He promised. And my dad is a good father, he never breaks his promises. Although I continued telling myself that my father couldn't possibly be dead, I already knew the truth. No matter how good my father he was, that was only mortal. Getting hit by a truck, he didn't have a chance. Faced with that harsh truth, I began to question why. Why did he have to die? Wait, why was he so sudden? This feels like a scene from a movie, or some kind of bad joke. I half expected the police officer to yell, Just kidding, and have, and to have a camera crew emerge from behind his back. This could be like one of those TV shows dedicated to pranking celebrities. But it isn't. This is reality. My dad released it. It's nothing more than a lump of meat inside a crushed car. A splash of blood on the side of the road. What kind of child thinks this? That's all that's left of him. Not even his goofy smile will remain. Gone? It's all gone. If only I hadn't told him to come home faster. If only I hadn't been so impatient. Yet? Well, you didn't tell him exactly. You told your mother that he should. And mom was like, yes, yes, yes. But, and he called me 10 minutes ago. He said he's coming home. And that's it. See, you, you didn't exactly tell him on the phone directly. If only I hadn't been so impatient. Mom was right, my kid wasn't going to go anywhere, but Dad... Now Dad is never going to come back, and it's all my fault. Hideaki? She likes to look at me with concern in her eyes and reach for my hand. But I didn't want her sympathy, I batted her hand away as my whole body shook. I could feel something rising up from within my stomach, shaking its way through my body, up to the back of my throat. What came out of my mouth was a scream, a loud, desperate howl like that of a wild animal. animal. And once I started, I couldn't stop. I continued to scream, my throat tore, my eyes watered, and I could no longer hold anything back. Hideaki? Hidi? My mom turned away from the police officer and rushed towards me, her eyes wide open with concern. She bent down, attempting to hug me, but I threw her off me. Witnessing my mother's failure, she tried to approach me again. I felt a light pressure against my back, 
Palm Sin shook at me. Her hand, her head was just resting against my back. I shuddered, attempting to draw breath, but it's hard. Everything hurts. My vocal cords feel as though they've been cut in two with a pair of scissors and my knees tremble. Hideaki, please calm down, don't cry. So she says, but from her wavering voice, even without looking at her, I can tell that she's crying too. She actually got along well with my dad, even if they didn't know each other very well. His death took its toll on her. No, that's not it. She doesn't care that she's dead, neither does that damn policeman. They just want me to shut up and be quiet. My pain is an inconvenience to them. What they feel is in sadness, it's pity. And I want none of it. Before I knew what was happening, I was running. I had shaken Chinachi off me and bolted right through the front door and ran without hesitation. Okay. When I finally came to a halt and gathered my bearings, I realized where I was. My legs carried me her subconsciously, even though I didn't have a particular escape in mind. I ran to the bridge upon which I first met Chinatsu. It's the river, the same river where I first met Chinatsu. Why did I come here? Is it because of all the good memories I have from this place, playing with Chinatsu? Did I think that everything could be reset if I just ran from reality? It's understandable that I want to run away, to return to my own life, but... But that is impossible. What's done is done and it can't be taken back. I can't go back in time, I can't change the past, I can't do anything. All I can do is cry. No, that isn't strictly true, there is something I can do. Wait, a child pondering suicide? I wonder if Charles even can do that. Something I have to do. My impulsive work caused my father's death. If I hadn't told him to hurry, you did tell him to hurry? I thought you just told your mom. He would have kept a closer eye on the road and maybe he wouldn't have been hit by that truck. It's all because of me, it's all my fault. So in that case, I deserve to be punished. Whenever people con commit murder, they are usually given the death penalty. That's fair, that's justice, it's how the legal system works. And that's what I should do right now. I stare at the rushing water in the river below. It looked dirtier than it did when I last saw Chinat swimming in here. The water is dark and steely, a murky green. No, it's glowing. It's glowing water. It's like contaminated or something. Cause waters don't glow like this. Look, it even glows upwards. Like, look, what, what kind of water glows? Blah. It was something I didn't want to touch, let alone submerge myself in. Nonetheless, I take a few tentative steps towards staring at my distorted reflection within the water. Can I really do this? Should I? I know that didn't really kill my father. It wasn't my fault. It was the driver of that truck. I couldn't have done a thing to stop it from happening. But I don't want to accept that. If I never accept that, if I accept that it had nothing to do with me, that would be the same as accepting that that death was unpreventable. That it was meaningless. I continued to stand there, staring at the water, immersing my own thoughts. Hidi! Hidi Akikun? Ah! Two voices rang out from behind me. As I turned around, I found Mom and Shinachi running towards me from down the, the dirt path along the riverbank. They really, do, they really do look worried about me. Mom's face is pale as though she's, seen a, she's just seen a ghost, and Shinachi is wearing a, an expression of pity. I straightened my back and took a step towards them, away from the river. But as I did, wah! As I tried to move, I felt my foot catch on to something. Be it a rock, a root, or something else entirely, I responded to my death wish and send me tumbling backwards. Okay, so you didn't come well you pondered the thought, but you didn't, you just tripped and fell. I tried to balance myself terrified by the falling sensation, but without anything to hold on to, I could only fall. Hidi Submerged cold and bereft of oxygen, I entered the river. I don't think a child would know how to use the word bereft. Sticking down the, into the depths of I uh, unable to fight the current, I drifted helplessly, endlessly as my body was taken below. Then how did she not you die? Yeah, she saved you, then how did she die? I mean, she saved you, she had to carry you out. So if she carried you out, she would have been safe. You know? Unless she carried you out and then she jumped back in and died. <laughs> ah, so this is it, huh? This is what I wish for. Peace and quiet, away from everyone. A punishment I can accept. The further I sang, the less inclined I felt to try and swim to the surface. My thoughts clouded over with a sense of relief. I had no desire to continue fighting. I just wanted to submit and to let it all end. Why did I hesitate? I should have done this from the start. This is the only way I can atone for what I did and the only way I can ever live it down, so to speak. I just hope that Chinatsu and Mama are okay. It'll be tough for Mom, losing her entire family in one day, but... She'll be better off without me. Mm. 
Ah, you're awake. Shh, not you? Shh, it's alright, don't move, I'm here. I blinked as the sun burned my eyes. Well, she's, re she's not just a dog form, I assume. Now we're in adult form. The entire world was white, as though I'd been submerged in darkness until just one moment ago. I'm sorry, Hideaki-kun, I really am sorry. The figure in front of me saw begging for forgiveness. I could barely make out the image before me, but even without my eyes adjusting, I knew who it was. Shinatsu. I reached out towards Shinatsu's face, wanting nothing more than to stop her from crying. But I have no idea why she's crying, or what I could do to make her stop. All I know is that ins the inside of my mouth tastes stale and dirty, as though I'd been drinking dirty water. I tried to lift my arm to, face to my face as I coughed up water, but I soon realized that I couldn't. My body had no strength left. I'm sorry, Hideaki kun, I really am. I'm sorry you had to suffer so much. Why is she not you crying? Why is she apologizing? Did she do something to me? Did she push me in the river or something? Did I did I nearly drown? It would be better if you could forget about me, Hideaki kun. Just forget about everything. That way you won't need to be sad anymore. As Shinachi spoke, I felt the rest of my strength leave my body. My eyes slowly closed and I lost all consciousness. But how did Shinatsu drown? She, she, okay, she says that she carried us out. Then what? How did she die? As my mother's story finally ended, I could only stare at her blankly from across the kitchen table, as if I had just awoken from a horrible nightmare. I had actually stopped listening to her a while ago, overcome as my own memories filled in the blanks. Because now, prompted by my mother's story at long last, I remember. I could remember so clearly that I didn't understand how I could have forgotten to begin with. Shinatsu, I, I know her. We were friends, we used to play together almost every day. That's right. My mother nodded her head, wearily. Although the time you spent together wasn't very long, she was your closest friend. The two of you were joined at the hit. You were, we went everywhere together, did everything together. It was quite a sight to behold. My mother smiled to herself as she spoke, indulging in nostalgia. Your father always used to tease you asking when the marriage ceremony was going to take place, and you would get so mad, he did. You hit him a few times, but you were too young to really hurt him, your father just laughed. He always was such a lively person, he never stopped smiling, right, on, right up until he died. My mother's smile faded as I spoke those unnecessary words. That's right, he died and on your birthday on, at that. It was a terrible shock, perhaps even more so than falling into the river. That's why the doctor said when you were in the hospital. They said it must have been the news about your father, coupled with the stress of almost drowning, that wiped your memories. They called it an act of self-preservation, forgetting in order to protect yourself. And Shinatsu? Why did I forget her too? Her too, I brought her up now and then, but the look you gave me was so blank that I knew you couldn't remember her. Not a single thing. It was mortifying, but perhaps it was a good thing. You really had to do with the loss of your father, adding any more misery onto that would have been cruel. So Shinatsu... My finger clenched into fists. I don't want to ask this question, but I have to. I've come so far now, and this was the very last piece of the puzzle. No, the very last piece of the yeah, yeah, it is the last piece of the puzzle. She saved you, then she went missing, and her body came up in the river. Why? Don't know. I think I have a good idea about what happened already, but I want to hear it from my mother's lips first. No matter how painful it is, I need to know the truth. What happened to Chinatsu? My mother froze for a second, dreading the moment when this question would arise. She, she cared for you so much, she did. When you ran away, she ran after you. She tried to get you to stop, but when you fell into the river, she... My mother choked on her own words. She was always such a good swimmer. Her parents said she was like a mermaid. She would always swim in that river, even though she said the sign said not to. But it never seemed to bother you, at least. Not until that day. So, she... She drowned? My mom, mom nodded. That's right, Chinatsu was able to save you, but towing you back to the shore must have been too much for a small body. I managed to rescue her from the river, but it was no good. She had swallowed too much water, no matter what I did, she didn't wake up. Wait, how did she carry you to the- I guess she just carried you to the shore, then maybe the river current pulled her away, then mother went to swim after her, and then by the time she saved her, it's too late. But like I said, if she pulled you back to the shore, she would be on the shore as well. You know? Like I said, the only thing I picture is she pushed you up to the shore. Then after that, um, the current carried her away and then you... Yeah, I guess. It's kind of weird. Like, you know, yeah, kind of weird. I suddenly stared at my mother, unwilling to accept what she did, what she said to me. 
Shinachi Misaki, my best friend, died. She died in order to save me. She took me back to the shore, depleting the entirety of energy until she could no longer keep afloat. She died because I tried to kill myself. The gravity of what had happened weighed down on me heavily. In one day, I killed two of the people closest to me. I killed two good, kind, caring people all because of my selfish and impatient personality. But it's not just that. She started trying to save me and I forgot about her. I completely forgot all about her sacrifice. Maybe that's why she came back to me after all these years. As I returned to the scene of her death, she wanted to see me one last time to say goodbye to the boy who killed her. Not only did she die for me, she revived for my sake too. Throughout her entire life even, and even after her death, I've, I've been an insurmountable burden to her. I kept her from passing on, kept her from overseeing her family from birth. I kept the chain to this- How do you know her family is your birth? Maybe they're still alive as old people, you know? After her parents found that she died, she died, she- they moved out. But that's it. You don't know if they are dead, they can be still alive, living as old people. You know? I kept- or you mean her other family, like her grandparents, her great-grandparents and so on and so forth. I've kept her changed to this planet ever since that day. And now, after all this time, She will finally know peace. Returning once again to the scene of so much pain and joy, I crept out of the house and over to Chinatsu's bridge. Although I had missed her so frequently and logically, she should have been there. I knew I'd find her here tonight. So you're here again, huh? Oh, hello Hideaki Kun. Chinatsu turned to face me wearing a smile without a hint of sadness. Despite our recent encounters all ending badly, Shinatsu seemed to as joyful and kind as ever. Alright, from the looks of it, I don't think Shinatsu will want to kill us. Maybe she could still want to kill us, but I don't think she wants to kill us. I see a few possibilities. One, she passed on, then there's the happy sad ending where she passed on. And ending number two, we die her and join we die, we commit suicide, die and join her as ghosts. Well that's kinda of, actually that's kinda of, um twisted, but you know. Ending number three, she ki she does have vengeance for us and then kills us because we neglected her. Despite our recent encounters, you all ended badly. She not seemed as joyful and kind as ever. She greeted me without hesitation, smiled happily, and acted like her old self. But something was amiss. Although she wore a smile, she not see the pale skin looked even lighter than usual. In fact, it looked downright transparent, like a glass window. I could see right through her her head as though she wasn't even there. And at that moment, I knew that what was wrong. Shinatsu's time is finally up. Her visage faded in and out, lacking the detail she once possessed. Her body pulsed, I could see her energy waning. Each time fear fearing it might be the last. I wonder if it hurts. Residing in this world of the living as a ghost, with no flesh and body to blood body to keep you anchored to reality must be painful. And yet every moment until this point she struggled against her very nature, so just so she could spend time with me. She did it all for me, and that's Unforgivable. Hideaki kun? Chinachu blinked, visibly surprised by what she heard. Of all the things I could have said to her, that had to be the one most of the most unexpected. To be ethereally beautiful Chinachu Misaki, who is dying for the second time I didn't know compassion but rather annoyance. What is it, Hideaki kun? You look sad. Of course I'm sad. How could I not be sad given what happened? I forgot all about you. You might have forgotten me, but it was not deliberate. That doesn't matter. I forgot you, you sacrificed so much for me and I. I was your horrible friend, you could hardly call me a friend at all and yet you... You gave up your life for me. You gave up... And then your, your afterlife too. I don't deserve it, I can't stand it. You didn't need to sacrifice so much for me. You shouldn't have, you... You shouldn't have died. I didn't want you to die. It took me a few moments before I realized I was crying. You're the Aki-kun. So that you approached me with fortune steps like a newborn deer. It seems even walk... King is a chore for her now, as though the impact of feet pressing against the ground will cause even more of her body to, to fragment. Even now she's still trying so hard, she's trying to so hard for me. Why? Why what? Why did you wait for here for me? I don't understand. I choked on my tears, barely able to speak coherently. Chen actually surveyed me, frowned then tilted her head towards the eye as though she was thinking deeply. I don't understand it either. Becoming a ghost wasn't a conscious decision that I made, it just kind of happened. One moment I was drowning and the next I'm not sure. I remember praying as I went under. I hope Hideaki Kun is okay. I want to make sure he's okay. Then when that 
That was when I saw a light. It was soft and warm, even though the river was horribly cold and I went towards it. Then when I opened my eyes, I was sitting by the riverbank and you were lying there. Your eyes were closed, your body was cold and yet, I was the one who was dead. I... I remember that. I saw you leaning over to me. Over me. You told me... You told me it would be better if I forgot everything. That's right. I did. I thought you'd be happier that way, but I... Even though I wanted what was best for you, I was selfish. I couldn't stand being forgotten, and that was why I couldn't pass on. Because contrary to what I said, I wanted you to remember me. I didn't want to upset you, so I tried to keep my distance, but all at the same time, I couldn't stop thinking about you. I mean, I did die because of you, Hideaki-kun. It wasn't nice though. I was hoping for some kind of reward, but... I did not want you to recognize how hard I worked. She actually smiled teasing, really careful not to sound serious as she blamed for her... As she blamed for, for her death. So do you understand now? I'm not a good person. I was not waiting for your sake, it was for mine. It was because deep down inside, I really did want to be acknowledged. I wanted my death to mean something and I wanted to see you one last time. Though we only knew each other for a short while, I really did like you Hideaki-kun. Shirachi's form continued to grow fainter and fainter. And smaller. I could- Oh, she- Oh, it's this far away. She didn't go smaller, she's like further away. Like, you know, rising up to the up above. I could still see her smile, but even that was fading. But now that I've finally gotten to see you again, I must say goodbye. G goodbye? That's right. You finally remembered me. So now, I have no other reason to remain behind. Faint, not, faint though it may be, Shinachi's smile looked both soft and peaceful. Thank you, Hideaki-kun. I really am glad that I was able to see you again. I was so overjoyed when I first saw you and yet, I was also scared. I was scared that my existence would just unsell you. That's why I tried to keep my distance. And yet, even after I ran away, you tried to find me. And I'm glad you did because now, I can finally rest in peace. Shinatsu sounds so calm but I can't accept this. It does, doesn't seem fair. I still don't understand how a ghost grows up. Like she should... Like she died as a child, then her bo her ghost form grew up, like aged as she aged, you know? Um, I don't know. Why should she look at me so tenderly when she resided to death? When this was all because of my foolish actions, why didn't she resent me? If I were Chinatsu, I know I would, but I I don't want you to go. Hideaki-kun? I might be at peace, but I, I don't want to... I don't know what to do anymore. How can I keep on going knowing that a good person, a kind, gentle, caring girl died on my behalf. You're going to disappear and I'm going to stay behind and it just isn't fair. Yeah right, it isn't fair. But life really is. I've had enough time to realize that. Sh Shinatsu. Don't worry, and don't cry for me either. Shinatsu took another trembling step towards me, almost stumbling as she did. She slowly brought one hand to my face trying to wipe away my tears, but her hand passed straight through me. Shinatsu. I saved you because I wanted to. I did it because I liked you. So don't worry, I don't send you. Oh damn, this is kinda sad. Shinachi so looked so small, so fragile, standing there on the bridge. The moonlight was so bright that it seemed to consume her, wiping the very last trace of Shinachi Misaki clean from the earth. Even so, she remained firm, not budging an inch. Shinachi has always been a strong willed person, despite her quiet nature. I know that better than anyone. Shinachi doesn't give up, she's in a quitter. That's why she was able to hang on, even when the breath was choked from her body and her heart stopped beating. She's strong, far stronger than I am. Even now she's about to die yet again, I'm the one crying, not her. Haha, <laughs> I must look so stupid. I don't think you look stupid. In fact, I'm glad that you care for me so deeply, Hideaki-kun. Hey, <laughs> I did make a pretty bad lead in a romance drama, wouldn't I? Weeping like that. Maybe not. Women like sensitive men. Or at least, I do. Shinatsu? I felt my cheeks burn in response to her words. I looked away trying to hide my embarrassment. You know, I... I think I might have had something of a crush on you when I was little, Hideaki-kun. You were my first love. I'm in silent, unsure of what to say. Yeah, this is getting sadder and sadder by the moment. In any, in any other situation, I would be ecstatic to hear those words. But right here, right now, they sound like the last confession of someone who has accepted their fate. If this is, really is our final goodbye, then I should be honest with her too. I don't want to end this strange, fantastical night with any regrets. I... I think I had a crush on you too, Chinatsu. Maybe I still do, just a little bit. You do? That's right. I think you're beautiful, but more than that, you're strong and brave. And you never give up. 
I admire you, Chinatiu, and I've done here for the, from the moment I met you. When I was a kid, I looked up to you, and I remember that feeling years later. Despite my failure to remember you, I really do love you, Chinatiu, and I always will. Hideaki Kunai. Chinatiu's voice wavered, not because of her fading existence, but because of the overpowering emotion flowing through her. I love you too. I felt that way since the moment we first met. I tried to make Chinatiu in my take Chinatiu in my arms, but of course that proved impossible. Without a physical body to grab, my arms went right through her. That must be why she wouldn't let me hold her hand. She knew this would happen, and she knew how I would react. I would have been terrified back then. But not anymore. Even though I can't touch her, even though even though I can't hold her. Even though no matter how what forms they take, the dead are dead. And they cannot ever truly reunite with the living. Well, until the living dies along, I guess. Unless she reincarnates then, you know, or something or whatever. You know, whatever this do this world has for an afterlife in this game. This feels right. It has to be right. Because I love her. I lowered my head and she likes to raise her to meet mine. I want to hold her hair and I want to stroke her hair, I want to kiss her lips, but it's far too late for that now. This is all I can do. Yeah, this is quite sad. I brought my own lips to meet the ghostly impression of Chinatsu. I couldn't feel anything other than a slight touch of cold there. The motion was so chest, it could not even be called a kiss. Even 4th even graders would be more daring. But to me, it was precious nonetheless. Nevertheless, This is my precious final moment with Chinatsu Misaki. The fierce young girl who stole my heart and consequently lost the use of her own. I closed my eyes vividly imagining that I was I really was holding Shinatsu in my arms, feeling her lips against mine. Sh Shinatsu? When I finally opened my eyes, she's gone. I was, alo I was all alone. The end! Ghost of the River! That felt like the good ending, it didn't feel like a bad ending. Ah. Well, there is no app. Is that an epilogue after? I don't think there's an epilogue after this. Ah. Ah. Well, that is Shinachi's ending. I didn't, I didn't plan to get her ending, but we got her ending. Ah, uh, Shinachi and how do we neglected you? We neglected you, and we got your ending out of the way. I have a theory. The theory is that not all the girls have equal chances. That means out of all the dialogue choices. Choices and options we given we are given to get close to a girl like there's perhaps your relationship point system like when we choose to to go to the roof to see Shiro over the club room and everything else we get one point with Shiro for example so I believe that's but then not everyone has the same points like Chinatsu and Sho and Ryo for example might have um, more opportunities to get close to them whereas People like Shiro might not. In fact, I think Shiro might be the least, might have the least opportunity among all of them because Chin we are forced to meet Chinatsu and talk to her, and we get a lot of opportunities to meet with her. We got without any consequences, like choose between her or someone else. Then Rio's the same also. He's our friend and he always joins us. Then Megumi also because she's kind of following us around all the time. Then it's just Yui and Shiro who has the least opportunity to get close to. So that means I must neglect, purposefully neglect the other girls just so I can get Shiro. Huh. That's my theory anyway. In the next ending, in the next episode, we will be going after Shiro. It looks like I'll have to start all over from the first choice. Oh yeah. I'll skip of course the choice that I've I mean the text that I've already read, so it won't, we don't have to play through the whole game entirely again and whenever we reach the we haven't read yet, then yeah. Then we will actually read through it. So yeah, I do not know whether I... I know definitely for sure I want to get Shiro, there you are. We're definitely going to get you Shiro. You're the best waifu in this game. But should we get Yui and Megumi as well? We really got Chinatsu sending, we got Ryo sending. As, um, as, I don't know whether it's proud to say I'm proud to say that, but... We got Ryo sending and we got Chinachi sending. So if you want to see Yui and Megami sending, let me know in the comments. I might just do Shiro and just end it there. Yeah. So leave a like, comment, and subscribe and follow me on 
Twitter at DMindGaming if you have enjoyed. And I hope to see you again in the next episode.